the gospel of life, incorruption, immortality, and sonship with the bondservant of Christ, John Anosike. Jesus, this woman was caught in adultery and according to the laws of Moses, she should have been stoned dead. What do you say? The Spirit of the Lord took me on a vision in the past, in that scripture, into the volume of that scripture in the realms. I realized that they knew that that woman had a tendency of being weak sexually. So they set her up. It's just like a man of God is genuine and somebody set him up and he falls for it and they recorded it. And they want to depict that man of God as sexual and immoral. So they use that evidence to circulate it all across the social media to tarnish the, re the reputation of that one man of God. It could be one mistake that he made. So the entire setup was not for the woman, but the woman was just the victim. Was just the object that was used to see what can they do to catch Jesus with some kind of guilt. They, they just want to see what to do to bring Jesus and have evidences or something against him. Because they're trying to say, if he now goes against the law of Moses, we're going to hold him. We're going to put him where he belongs. And then Jesus knew what that was all about. Christ knew that it wasn't about the woman. It wasn't about holiness. It wasn't about repentance. They're not interested about the repentance of the woman. They, 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 they were not interested about the repentance of the woman. They were not concerned about using the laws of Moses to bring her to conviction. Rather, all of those scenarios was to implicate Jesus and have evidence against him and reasons to deplete his influence in the society. So that's why we must be discerning. It is not every gossip out there makes a man of God immoral. Jesus discerned. He was, see, he said, I am he that was. I, I, I know the secret. I know the past. I know yesterday. I know today. And I know tomorrow. So you can trust the judgment of Christ. Say amen to that. So Jesus in his infinite potency and power tapped into the memory boxes of everyone wanting to accuse the women and then he provoked he reminded them he, he 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 began to play when they all committed the same adultery oh he said if you are without the same sin cast your stone first because my word is pure. I want to kill flesh. I want to kill sin. I want to kill adultery. I want to kill anything sinful. Yes, it's true. But the purpose for which you want to kill this woman, you're guilty of it. Now, if you are the first here that has no such type of sin, cast stone first on this woman. <laughs> and then it transfigured. He teleported into the realms of the human memories and began to write on the ground. The memory box. Then they were in a vision, all of them, when they were kissing that woman, funny getting. He started playing in their heads. The Holy Ghost brought them to conviction. The Holy Ghost brought them to instant judgment because Jesus tapped into the human mind. The first one dropped his stone. The second dropped. The fourth dropped. <laughs> they dropped, they dropped, they dropped. Everybody dropped, they all walked away. And then, based on the foundation of the convictions and condemnation of the woman, Jesus said, I also have nothing against you. The platform for which they have judged you is filthy, and we're never against you. They wanted to use it against me. 
And because they have suffered for my sake, I exempt you. I have nothing against you. However, in my truth that transcends grace, I showed you grace. I have nothing against you. I knew you committed adultery, but now this is my truth. Rising above grace, go and sin no more. I thought he would have said, I have nothing against you. My grace covered you. It's okay. But he commanded her and empowered her and infused the ability of righteousness into her. Now go and sin. So, we must come to a point where we sin no more. There is a place in Christ where you can lose your appetite for sin. It's not by power, it's not by might. It's the fire that burns in your spirit. Something burns in your spirit. It's a burning. God is holy. God is righteous. God is spotless. God is sinless. When a man has stepped into God and God has stepped into a man, he will lose his ability to sin. But it takes a level of tribulation because the woman came at the point of death. Oh, you know, hear me now. I've been seeing that it takes death to step into sinlessness because the Jews were killers in those days. You know, hear me now. Yes, the Pharisees. They were killers. If you break the laws, they'll kill you. They are used to it. It's their, it, it was their custom. They killed Stephen. They stoned Stephen. Paul was a Jew. I mean, Saul then he was a Jew. He was a Pharisee. He killed Stephen. So their law kills. In one of the days, they killed Paul. They stoned him. So they were killers. So to kill was easy. So the woman had in mind that she had come to the end of her life. She would have been killed, not because they really wanted to kill her. They would have killed her for the sake of Jesus. So that unlocked the dimension of holiness and deadness to sin. You must come to the point of death if you must overcome sin. Lord, show me the way of death. Show me the tribulations that will precede the deadness of my flesh. That by adventure my body might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus dwells in you, he that raised up Christ shall resurrect your body. So this is not about the resurrection of the dead in the last day. This is about the resurrection of the body. You are in a dead body. As long as fornication is there, as so long as adultery is there, the tendencies to sin, the cravings, the corruption of the human flesh still lies in your human body. You are dead. Mehila. So we come through the process of death in order to have the resurrection of the body. Special announcement from the office of the bond servant of Christ, John Anosike. Please beware of fake accounts on social media, be it Facebook, YouTube, and all others impersonating the man of God asking for funds from people. Please note, Pastor John does not have any orphanage in Nigeria or in any country, nor does he ask anyone to donate to any orphanage. Also note that the only official page of the man of God, Pastor John Anosike, is the one with over 451,000 
followers. Our YouTube channel also has over 155,000 subscribers. Note that the man of God does not chat, send friend requests, nor inbox people on social media, be it Messenger or WhatsApp. Therefore, anyone doing such is false and should be treated as such. This is a notice that you are informed and sensitized to be alert and vigilant. Stay connected and keep subscribing to the teachings of the bond servant of Christ, John Anosike. Due to malicious and fraudulent activities, please note that these are the only official two accounts of the ministry. For EFT or Bank Transfer, Bank, First National Bank, FNB, Account Name, New World Faith Ministries, Account Number, 6226703548 branch woodstock branch code 250655 swift code FIRNZAJJ building project banking details city of sons bank first national bank FNB account name new world faith ministries account number 623-569-03578 Branch code 250655 Branch Woodstock Swift code FIRNZAJJ To give online, kindly visit our website and use the following link www.spiritrevelationchurch.org forward slash give Here, you can give via Payfast For those that are in Southern Africa in PayPal for international donations. Good news for all those living in West Africa. For your giving and donations, here are the only official and approved banking details. Name, Ikechuku John Anosike. Account number, 11700020753. Bank, Zenith Bank. Please note that the following is our official and only PayPal email for the ministry. Donations at spiritrevelationchurch.org Kindly report any suspicious activities to our emergency line. Plus 27634235895 Or email info at spiritrevelationchurch.org